Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another NFL Draft special edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and this dancing fool next to me is the one and only Mr. Brian e. Roach. Brian, I was going to ask how you're feeling. You look pretty good, my friend. What's up? It's mock draft insanity time. It's insanity. It is. It's crazy. <laughs> it's Let's explain. Insane. All right, we've got limited time because we're not trying to make everyone spend an hour with us on each individual show. And we may still have one or two more before this draft kicks off Thursday, 2023 NFL draft uh, base rules here. You know, I was talking uh, if you didn't catch some of the previous. What's what? 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 Can we tell you what the base rules are? Well, no, first I'm going to tell everybody that the Steelers have pick 17 overall in the first round of the NFL draft. And then they have what is uh, uh, effectively pick 32. It is the first pick of the second round and then pick 49 also in the second round. But that is not what we're doing. And against everything else they've talked about, the previous two shows that aired yesterday, Zach, Flash, Celedonia, we went through mocking the mock drafts. You would have enjoyed that, my friend. It was actually not a whole lot to mocks. Most of them, 90% of them were pretty good. Uh, Joe DeLeon from Believe Podcast Network came on. He's I watched the, that. Yeah, he's one of the draft gurus. I, it's refreshing because I didn't want to plant any seeds in Joe's head, but it was good that that Joe thought like this Joe. So that's always makes me feel good on the same page with stuff, especially like you were saying, Dewan Jones might not be interested in playing football. It's funny that that came up in the Steelers press conference, my friend. And, uh, yes, it did. So check those out. But we were talking about we don't really like trades, and you see the silly stuff that happens. We record two shows and the New York Jets go and screw up the whole draft order. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Now everybody's like, oh, the Jets are going to be good. And I'm like, man, you better hope this dude ain't washed. Like, I, I, I don't think this is a situation like where you go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and they're really a quarterback away, like everybody's saying. But I digress. And one other Steelers tidbit of note before Brian goes over the base rules of what actually mock draft insanity is for all of our newcomers who haven't seen this crazy ass stuff before. Uh, well, I was gonna quote I was gonna quote Christopher Lloyd. When this baby gets up to 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. <laughs> so we're gonna get up to it. Miles Boykin resigns with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Special teams stand out. Very excited about adding him in that capacity. Feels like a very well-rounded team. Brian, now on to the mock draft insanity. No trade is off the table. In fact, all you're going to do is load us up with about a bazillion first-round picks. Is that how it right. works? This is how it works. So every year I come up with something that's ridiculous. Um, and the, the rules, the, the base-level rules are I am allowed to trade away as much as I want from the next two years. I can trade the entire draft classes for the next two years away. And then I make up more rules. So the rules this year are I, I've given up every draft pick in 2025 and 2024. I gave the entire 2024 draft to the Carolina Panthers and got back their first two picks. <laughs> I gave all of the 2025 draft to the Houston Texans and got their first three picks. So... I now have a large number of first round picks. Wait, I think uh, I could show some of this on screen. Were you still doing some of this? Okay, so here a we go. Bit. You can see there's there's the yeah. second trade, right? So I got two twelve <laughs> and thirty three, but I gave away entire the entire twenty twenty five draft. Okay, now here's Which, the other part of this. Wait, yeah. I am not allowed to draft anybody in the top ten, so I must okay. keep trading back all the way out of the top 10 before I can make my first pick. Those and, are the rules. And, and part of, and part of this, um, we should say was, is this sponsored by draft day with Kevin Costner? That is correct. The way that I, the way that I prepare <laughs> for this is every day, every day up until the point where I either create the mock draft insanity or the insanity just overtakes my brain. I watch draft day with Kevin Costner. 
constantly, 24 hours a day. It's like Christmas story at Christmas, but it's not. It's draft day, a except I was too busy. I really couldn't do that this year, so I only watched it once. <laughs> <laughs> and and you got to have the yellow post-it notes. See, we've been yes. uh, I've, I've been busy. Been busy. I, I I've been redoing things here on the set. I got the pens behind me. The post-it notes right there, just in case I need. Just in case I need them. What's the quote in the movie? What's he write on that? It's like who who what somebody, somebody no matter what. No matter what. That's what it yeah, was. No matter what. Okay. So All right. We are we're ready, ready to start the draft. And we're doing this kind of on the fly, right? This is as it got yeah, it's you. on the fly. Yeah, you're cut um, off there. There you go. All right, I know you got so, you got to press your nose up against the computer screen. I mean, I I'm, I'm trying to make it so everybody could see. <laughs> So I can <laughs> Not your nose hairs, uh, the actual picks here. And we're doing what? Pro Football Focus, Mock yeah, Draft the, Simulator. The, the, the Wizards of PFF, I, I signed up for their seven-day free trial, and I will cancel it immediately after this so <laughs> that I don't actually have to pay them anything. I'll um, say that because now that now you're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> uh, you know, they're weird. Um, so, okay. So we're first, and we have eight <laughs> trade options. Dealers are um, on the clock. On the clock. And the Colts want to trade up. Um, and so now I can say, okay, you want the first pick, which is, of course, what they want. I want four. I want 35. I want this. I want this. Now, right now, there's a very limited chance that this will go, right? Yeah. So I can decide, okay, what? Well, and, and, and clearly what I'm doing is trying to rebuild my coffers. Yes, the 2024, well as, 2025 first rounders that you, that you yeah. gave up already. So, so now I'm going to get my two first rounders back in theory um, and some other stuff as well as the 35th pick. <laughs> now I will offer this trade and they take it 27% oh. chance. I am Kevin Costner. I just told you to go be a pancake eating, whatever. So, okay. <laughs> Pretty much guaranteed. They're going to take Bryce. Young, and they did. All right. Now I'm in number two spot. All right. And at number two, I only have one draft. Well, I only have one trade partner available right now. That's scaring me a little bit, to be honest with you, because it makes me feel like I'm not going to get a great chance to rebuild what I want. All right. But this is a high value trade partner in the sense that I'm going to get a lot for this pick. Okay? Yeah. And it's the Rams, too. Yeah. You know, the, they don't like draft picks. They love no. to, they just give them away. So you, this might get accepted if you just take everything for the next three years. Well, just watch. I'm going to take 36 too. Okay, see, so you've got 36 for this year, and then are you picking every one of their picks for 2024 and 2025? I want everything. <laughs> I want it all. Only for pick two overall. Only for pick two. Just look. And this has an 84% chance to be accepted. What if I say throw in 69? I like my trade chances to be below hey, where does 50%. It say the percent, where does it say the percentage at? I can't see it. Oh, you it can't the see it. It's yeah, below it the screen. Off. Yeah. Our apologies. Here, I'll, I'll try and scroll it up a little bit before you go. There you ah, go. There we go. 47% chance to be accepted. All right. I'm going to offer the trade. Oh, look at that. The Rams don't want to draft for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and who said this was insane or unrealistic, Brian? It is. Hey, Brian. I know. Yeah. Let me say hi to everybody. You're out of hey, the frame. I, I, how you doing? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to press the resume button. He's got, he's got a look. He's got a, it's the, is it the glasses? Now, like, uh, look, this is what I find amusing. Who did they take? Gave up two years worth of draft picks plus two this year uh, to take Peter Skaransky at number yeah. two. Oh man. We don't even know if he's going to play tackle. Right. Joe Deleon thinks that the Steelers would take a shot at him <clears throat> uh, play in there. Yes, they did. They All might. right. But so, they're not going to get him because we we traded out of the first two picks. But Skaronsky might fall out of the top ten. <laughs> right. Sure. We traded out of the first two picks. We're now at pick four, and I have seven trade partners. Oh, look, it's the Los Angeles Raiders who have come to call, and I will get less oh, for It's the Vegas because, Raiders. The Vegas, yeah, Vegas Raiders. Raiders. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders. I'm going to get less for this because they're only moving up three spots, and the three spots are in – you know, are, are lower, right? It's not one and two or three. Yes. So I know I'm going to get less for this. I will see what I can. And, and really, I don't even know. Do I need, do I want to go and just add a third 
and maybe I just say, you know, I'm going to add this. And well, how deep like, how deep are you taking the uh, the full draft here today? Are you going just through the first round, or are you trying I to think, just? Fill I up? think I went four rounds, but I have it Holy on turbo. Crap. So Not once even... I start drafting, this will go real fast. Don't yeah, worry. Okay, I got um, you. It's it's the setup to get to drafting. Okay, correct. So I don't know. I I will. I'm going to push them on this. Right now, I only have a nine percent chance of this of this tra trade being accepted. And that 9% chance is to get 738 and a round two for next year for them to move up three spots. Pretty conservative. I think it's still pretty conservative from the, the rest of the insanity we've already seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But and they take it. 9% oh. chance and they take it. Okay. So now I've moved back Damn. to seven. I remove, resume the draft. And let's just look over here. They moved up to take Anthony Richardson. That's not a big surprise. Will Anderson Jr. goes five. Dalton Kincaid, the Woo. tight end. Goes six to the to Detroit Lions. Yeah. That's sure some, Eric, he does. some Eric Ebron vibes there, my That's friend. That's a little a little frightening. Okay, Oof. so will Will Levi Strauss is still on the board. C.J. Stroud is still on the board. Uh, you've got both Devin. Wait, Wimish hold on a second. Hold, hold, on the board. hold on, hold on. Levi Strauss. There's some folks that might not understand what that means. Sears Roebuck and Company, and I even used the blue light special on you on a text message yeah. earlier. Like only you would get these references. <laughs> it's jeans, okay? If you didn't, I mean, you got to know it's jeans, okay? Will it's Levi only, Strauss's jeans. It's only <laughs> Le it's only Levi's for the young and happening kids. Oh, what can I fleece the Patriots for? Okay, Let's where are we see. at now? We're down. We're still not out of the top ten yet, but the Patriots have come calling for what pick seven. After Pick Dalton seven, goes, and I don't know that I'm going to, again. I'm, so you still want to swap first rounders. Obviously you want to get yeah. their first rounder and then you're trying to get it from um, next I'm trying year. to get another first rounder as well as a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Don't ask me why. All right. This has a 3% chance of success. Three. But it will. Percent chance. Oh, look at that. 3% chance. I am Kevin Costner. <laughs> I don't even know what his name is in the movie. I'm going to have to look that whatever up. Whatever his name is. I am. I am the GM from uh, of all GMs. That's what I am. You know okay. The, you know what so, the funny thing is, Brian? If they were to reboot that movie, they would still use the Cleveland Browns as the team for the example. They sure would. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that the that the Patriots take CJ Stroud here, but let's see. All right. Uh, they oh, took. We got a little bit of light. Miles there. Murphy. But they traded me two first round picks to take Miles Murphy. Uh, I, pro football focus is like after uh, uh, is it off their gourd on the gourd out of the gourd in the gourd something with the gourds all the gourds that's like it's some crazy stuff uh, you can't look okay so now we're we're in pick territory because i have a nobody wants to trade with me anymore because of the, i've apparently gotten everybody's called and said no uh, he just calls us pancake eating mfers and steals all our stuff all right, we are now at the 12th pick. Okay, who's gone so far? Who's gone off the so board? Who's so, gone? Bryce uh, Young, Skaransky, Jalen Carter, Anthony Richardson, Will Anderson Jr., Dalton Kincaid, Miles Murphy, Emmanuel Forbes. That's a very rich pick. Emmanuel Forbes at eight. Okay, sure, whatever you say. Paris Johnson is gone. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba went to the Eagles, and Nolan Smith to the Titans. This means we have our choice of either of the top two corners uh, and a bunch of other folks. Wait, wait. C.J. Stroud is still on the board? C.J. Stroud and Will Levi Strauss are both still on the board. I'm not interested in Will is Strauss Maltz guy. Like, no. Um, Mini Hulk. I'm not interested. Uh, here's, the, here's the question, though. C.J. Stroud is still on the board, but we have a quarterback. We have a quarterback. You can never have enough quarterbacks. Yeah, let them sit a year, and then maybe they can, <laughs> maybe you could do mock draft insanity trading Stroud next year. All right, but I'm not. I'm not. If it's me, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a, a probably a corner here. I'm either going to take Christian Gonzalez or I'm going to take Devin Witherspoon. For me, I like Christian Gonzalez a lot, but. The more complete of the two, the more ready of the two, in my view, is Devin Witherspoon. So I am going to take him. That's our first draft pick. Oh, there right. goes. C.J. Stroud goes so much Jordan Love. Sorry, Jordan Love. C.J. Stroud just came in to the, <laughs> the Green Bay Packers at 13. Man, and, and it's going crazy, isn't it? Now, Devin Witherspoon, that's the first pick the Steelers uh, had. First in this, pick the in Steelers have taken at 12, so, at 12 is so Devin Witherspoon. Remaining. Now, 
Okay, Sonny Weaver Jr. That's the name of Kevin Sonny Costner's Weaver character. Jr. I Sonny, am Weaver Sonny Weaver Jr. Jr. You have Channel what? By inner. Wait, this Sonny is Weaver fun. Jr. Wait, let's see this. It says remaining picks 14, 17, 32, 33, 35, 36, plus six. <laughs> but look at 2024. Yeah. And 2025. Well, we, yeah. Remember, I, I, I only had one pick. Now I've got three first rounders now in 2024, two in 2025, two seconds, a slew of other stuff. And I'm about to take m more candy from the Bills here. <laughs> Uh-oh, four trade partners. So let's four see. trade partners. So the Bills are at 27. I have my still my original pick at 17 left, right? Yes. And I've already got Devin Witherspoon. You've got Witherspoon. That's what I was going to ask because, like, it, now you're in the territory of the original pick. Do we want to yeah. get too saucy here? Because the Bills are back at, what, 27? 27. Okay. Um. And I'm sitting here, and I've got okay. I, I there's a, I could take Christian Gonzalez, and now I have two corners. Oh yo, Oof. you know the top two yeah. corners. I could take a variety of people. I could take Broderick Jones. Well, uh, of course, of course, if you're doing this in reality, who do you think the Buffalo Bills are wanting to trade up for in this case? B Bjam Robinson. Good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but let's go down and see what they say. A D line, a linebacker, or a corner. So there's a good chance it's Christian Gonzalez. Could be. Um, could be. But I already got my corner. Now let's the, the question here is what can I get out of them? Like as soon as I say I want another one, and I already have three one number one. So I actually, if I'm gonna have another third one, I want it in 2025. Because if I have four ones in 2024, that's just too many. You've done, wait, but you have done this exercise before where you've had like 13 first round picks. Yes, I have. I've done that before. Uh, okay, but you that seem one, happy, you seem happy to that. just have three in the subsequent years. That's, that'd be crazy. All right, I'm down to a 17% chance of this trade with the Bills working. Okay. I would give them New England's 14th pick. They give me their 27th, round one in 2025, and a four in 2025, and a five in 2024. Let's offer the trade up, and they take it. Of course they do. Right. Because I'm, I'm their pancake-eating MFers. <laughs> All right. So now right. we're – who's, I'm who's off the board now? I'm actually uh -oh. a little upset. I'm actually a little upset because a tackle run has occurred. Oh, yeah. Darnell Wright, who I was targeting, is gone. Anton Harrison is way too high for where he got picked, but he's gone. But the Bills took uh, K K Elijah the guy from Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I wasn't yeah. going to take him anyway, so that's okay with me. Yeah, that uh, feels a little rich there, I, too, Darnell I think. Darnell Wright when it bothers me a little bit. If I'm a, I am only have one trade partner sitting here right now, and the question is, do I really want to trade again with the Packers or 17? The answer is probably not. At this point, I want my tackle because my targeted tackle is gone, so I'm probably going to take Broderick Jones. Yeah, I was going to say, I, who's still available from the tackle lot here? Paris Johnson's gone. Darnell Wright Paris and Anton Johnson's Harrison. Gone. All the top ones are gone, plus a couple guys, except Roderick Jones. So, is it according to PFF, this is a little high to take Roderick Jones. Oh, I but don't know, man. I don't have another pick until 27, and I don't think he lasts until 27. Um, I know Christian Gonzalez is going to be gone by then, but there's a good chance Brian Branch is left when I get down to 27. Um, and I might be able to address some safety there. I might not. We'll just have to see. But Broderick Jones is where I'm going to go. So now we've got a second pick, right? So let's just quickly look at what got pulled after that. Dewan Jones, see, a tackle run was Woo. definitely going on here, right? For sure. Darnell Wright, Andon Harris, and Broderick Jones, Dewan Jones, all in a row. Bloom. Um, Those Jones boys. The only one that didn't go is Indiana. Yep, Indiana didn't go. There you go. Christian Gonzalez goes to the Vikings at 23. Then Man, the wow. Jaguars take Bijan Robinson. And Luke Whipler in the first round? I don't think so. But okay. You Wait, where did Luke you, go New to? I can't, I can't see it. It's cut off on the bottom there. Oh, there yeah. you go. And, yeah, and then there's your the rest boy of that them. you learned how to pronounce. Oh, Anna DK Kansas State. Zoma. The wow. Cowboys took him. That, I feel like this is just all contrarian stuff at this point. That, like when I was running, I, I stopped running PFF about a week or two ago. And yeah. I'll go back to it. That's just, that's nuts. I wonder if they're using Vegas odds on some of these. So, uh-oh. Well, Steelers on the clock at 27, and Brian is starting to talk trade again. 
I'm talking trade. I'm seeing whether I think I can get some some. Uh, what am I giving you? I'm giving you this. Well, no, it's too much. 27, 32, 33. So who's still on the board? You're just trying to load up at this. I'm point. just I'm just trying to see what I can get. Uh, and at this point, they're not telling I don't even you want no. 57. I don't like. I don't want it. <laughs> I just want. I might want. Let's see. If I could get if I could get a one and a two. Or maybe a one and a three. I don't think I can even get a one for 27. I can't. Okay, let's go back. So here's who's on the board. You've got Will Levi Strauss. Deontay Banks is still on the board. I'm interested. Jordan Addison, and I know everybody, it, it, all you, the Yenzers are going, are Yenzing right now because he's on the board and I could take him at 27. Quentin Johnson's on the board. Got a couple of edge guys. You've got the guard. And then you just keep going down, right? Um, and just to be clear, Look what we have at the top of the second round. Yeah. We have six picks in the top eight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, uh, that's pretty wild, man. I mean, uh, I can't, I can't disagree. I can't disagree with anything that you're picking up and putting down there. All so. right. I'm going to tell you that here's, here's what I do when I'm doing this. I sit here and I go, all right, I've got Patrick Peterson. Right. Um, and, and while I like, you know, uh, what's the other guy's name? Levi Wallace. Levi Wallace. I knew it was a Levi because I, I never called him Levi Strauss Wallace. But <laughs> um, Levi Wallace, I like Levi Wallace, but I like him better uh, sitting behind, you know. Uh, Devin Witherspoon. Devin Witherspoon. And I like having somebody like Deontay Banks sit behind Patrick Peterson and learn. Ooh. And then in two years, when Patrick Peterson maybe retires or decides he's done, now I got two corners that may be shut down corners. And guess who I'm picking? Sure enough, at 27, I'm taking Deontay Banks. Now I have corners locked up. I don't need any more corners. I'm good with corners. So what's the haul so far? It was Witherspoon. Um, it's Witherspoon, Broderick, Broderick, Jones. Uh, Broderick Jones, and... Uh, Deontay Banks, right? Deontay Banks. So okay. those are the three first-round draft picks I ended up getting. That's pretty smooth, right. man. And now you're back on the clock with 32. So who just came off the board right after 27 there? Let's see. Clark so Phillips. Clark Phillips, cornerback from <laughs> Utah to the Bengals. And Clint. you know why? Here's why they picked that guy. They just didn't they just get rid of a third? William ja or don't they have a, a third guy? William Jackson. Third? Oh, wait, that was our guy. Uh <laughs> at, but he used to be Bengals. Didn't he used to be Bengals before he left yes, and signed yes, with the That commanders? was a while That was a little while ago. That's they wanted uh, a third was again. a pup. They wanted a number three guy. So De Clark Phillips, the third, then Quentin Johnson goes to the saints. Osiris Torrance, who, if he had been here at 32, I would have picked, uh, went, even though we signed guards, you never know with injuries. It's always good to have depth and he's a mauler. I would have taken him. And then Tuli, Tui Pululu. I cannot say that young man's I'm not name. Even I'm gonna try. Yeah, not even just, gonna try. It's not. That's not in my vocabulary. If they draft him, then I'm gonna call him uh, Tui Tui Tuli T. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> take T -T. an edge guy T -T. here. The question is who, whether I'm gonna take Tyree Wilson or I'm gonna take Will McDonald. Hey, do you want to mock a mock draft real quick? Someone gave us Michael Mayer at 17th overall. I well, just that is dumb. earlier. That's, <laughs> All right, I like that's just idiotic. I'm sorry. I know you're not supposed to call people an idiot, but whoever drafted that one is an idiot. You know um, what? I will be able to tell you. It was in to, uh, today. I published the mock draft roundup uh, on SteelCityUnderground.com. You could see all of those, and you know there there's some corner picks. There's an Addison pick, uh, Jason McIntyre, who is a co-host on uh, Colin Coward's show, I believe, uh, Fox Sports. So he gives the Steelers a tight end. And I'm just looking at that like, no, that's too rich of a pick. So yeah, that's way too rich of a pick. Uh, not at 17. Uh, I mean, he might go in the 20s anyway. So there's some smoke about the tight end class going in the top 50. But we like, yeah, Darnell Washington came and visited. Oh, Darnell Washington. So. I have <laughs> I have six picks. We will end up with Darnell Washington. Yeah. There's no question about that. Um, like, unless the Cardinals take him at 34, we're going to have Darnell Washington. Okay. Uh, it, the question right now is, do I go Tyree Wilson or do I go Will McDonald? And I know you guys are still losing your mind because Jordan Addison is there. I got six picks here. If he gets past the Seahawks, I promise I will take him at 38 or 39 <laughs> unless I trade him away. Uh, but we'll see. So I think, like, I don't, 
I can't remember the last 6-6 edge rusher that we had, right? 6-6 six, six guy. 6-6. Six, six. Was Arthur Motes a little taller? I don't think so. No, I don't think he was, but, but Will Bud, McDonald's Bud six, with the three. hair. You ever seen yeah. Bud when he, when oh, he had Bud the dreads going? Bud with the hair was like seven foot, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm going to take Tyree Wilson um, from Texas Tech over Will McDonald the fourth from Iowa. If I wanted to, I could take them both, but I'm not going to. Um, so that's the draft pick I'm going to make right there. Oh, look, we're on the clock again. <laughs> pick 33 overall. Like pick 33 overall. Whoever the Steelers and, have making these picks, don't even leave the podium. Just stay there. <laughs> right. I Look, I know that I can get him a little later, but I'm taking him here just because I want Jack Campbell. I have a thing for Jack Campbell. I have a thing for his black and gold looking looks. I know you guys talked about him on the podcast with with uh, uh, the the Believe guy. Um, oh, I don't, yeah. I don't the other see Joe the Jack Lambert him. comparison because Lambert was more rangy and, and, and not as big as um, Jack Campbell is. But I see the 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 fierceness is the same. So I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. All right, so then Boston College guy, Zay Flowers, they pick at 34. The Cardinals took Zay Flowers. Okay. I'm still not taking Jordan Addison yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know. My next two picks are going to be Darnell Washington. So now we've got a tackle playing tight end for us. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to take Brian Breezy. Oh, man, Breezy's all the way down there. There's one of those names like you're for- going to forget if he slides down in there, especially with all of the other uh shenanigans we've been yep. pulling uh with this draft uh, all right would be pretty now, nice here okay. we sit at 38 i could take jordan addison i could take john michael schmitz as the center to sit behind mason cole it's top in my mind he's the top center in the draft even though the ohio state guy whipler went in the first round that somebody's on drugs um no <laughs> most, come that's on just not jordan addison all right, I'm taking Jordan Addison. You guys can calm down. He's now Steeler at 38. And then, it, I mean, you can look at what we have here, right? Wow, I, that is one hell of a let, go back up to the top. Okay, so Will Levis is still there, which yep, Levi I can Strauss totally still see on having. the board. Michael Mayer, Will McDonald, Jameer Gibbs, John Michael Schmitz, Mazzy Smith. Keep going. Did I see Cam Smith is the Cam next Smith, one? Steve Avila. Yeah. Tyreek Stevenson, Nathaniel Dell, DJ Turner, Hendon Hooker. Drew um, Sanders. Yeah, Drew Sanders. Yeah, there you go. Double up there at inside linebacker. So got Antonio Johnson, too. Did, uh, where, did Mahler Branch- from North Dakota State, Cody Mock, is there. Branch Branch went, though, right? Yeah, oh, Brian right. Branch went right after I said, if he's late there later, I'll take him. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not taking Mazzy Smith um, because I'm not. I, I might take John Michael Smith here. I have in several other versions of this that I've done. Um, I could take Steve Avila. I, I could even come down here and take Drew Sanders. The next pick I have is 49. Right? Oh, my and, goodness. We should work on that. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any trade partners, so I, I can't trade anymore. Uh, but I think I'm I'm going to go with the idea of making – our offensive line as young as possible to grow with it within it. Right. So we got, we got a tackle. I'm probably going to take another tackle at 49 and you could probably guess who it's going to be. Um, if he's there, if he's there, if he makes it to 49, I'm not sure he will. Um, and that gives us bookends around there. And even if one of these guys had to move in, so I'm going to take John Michael Schmitz. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, Fair enough. so we we come down to 49, and let's see what happened here. So Dell goes, uh, Uchi Juji, Kylie Ringo, Tyreek Stevenson, Will McDonald, Jalen Hyatt, Isaiah Foskey, somebody I'm not even going to try and say, and Tucker Craft. All right, so <laughs> pretty much the same guys I had a choice of at 39, I have a choice of at 49, uh, minus a couple, right? So I already told you I'm going to take a tackle, but now let's see. My next pick is 69. Nice. How did I get that pick? Um, Ooh, I, I think that was intentional. I, I did I pickpocketed somebody for that pick. Um, yeah, this is, uh, here's uh, my choices. I could, I could go Cody mock. 
I know who I like. I could go Drew Sanders. I could go Dan Hainsley. But I haven't drafted a D lineman yet. Are you looking at who I'm looking at? Uh, he's right there in the middle of the board for me. Yeah, Keanu Benton. Keanu Benton. Yeah, I um, like it. I really, uh, I'm like, I'm really sold on if there's somebody with a lot of value around that area, I, I'd be totally all over that. I, it's just tough for me oh, to Oh, no, pay. I did draft a D line. I for, forgot a poor Brian Breezy. Yeah, um, but you know what? Uh, Breezy's probably not going to play on the nose. Benton could play on the nose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so they, they, they serve two different purposes, especially like, did you hear some of the, the buzz about Leal and somebody had asked whether he'd be playing edge or defensive line in that presser. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, they, you know, that kind of maybe nudges the way this draft might, uh, board might work too. I, I took Benton. <laughs> I like, I, I'm, I'm cool with that, man. He's one of my favorites so far. I think I All took right. him in my mock too. Now we are now on the board again at 69. So after we take Benton, Avilia goes, my old Cody Mock goes, Michael Wilson, Jameer Gibbs, Keon White, DJ Turner, uh, Cedric Tillman, Jartavis there's Martin, there's Drew Sanders, goes to the Bills, Anthony Johnson Jr. to the Bengals, Garrett Williams, Tre Tre Trevius Hodges Tomlinson, that's too many names, Tylee Spears, <laughs> Dalen Hensley's gone, so the linebacker choices are pretty much gone, uh, except for the guy from Tulane, who I may pick later. Uh, Nick Herbig, uh, there's our Herbig brother is there. Yes. Um, Luke Musgrove, John Tip, uh, Joe, Joe Tipman, Tipman. and uh, Roshan Johnson. But look, look where Will Levi Strauss is. We're we're at pick sixty nine. Uh, you know what? He's a fit. Take him. This is <laughs> like this is like uh, if everyone's ever seen Mad Money back in the you know day with Jim Cramer and he hits the buttons. It's like bye bye bye. That's what you're gonna do right now. Bye bye bye. Because you know what? They need a QB three on this roster. The guy has some physical traits. I don't necessarily love him, especially I don't love him in the top 10 and maybe, you know, most of the first round. I get the affection that everybody has. You got to have a quarterback in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, overall, like even in the second round with the uh, now, not if the Steelers are already in, we're talking mock draft insanity, but even outside of mock draft insanity now and the Steelers are sitting there and this guy's there in the third round. Bye, bye, bye. Take him. Why, why not at this point? This could even net you. Uh, here's a comparison. This could net you something like a Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's say. Absolutely. Pickett gets hurt next year and uh, Levi's, Strauss's, Maltz comes in, a uh, mini Hulk, and he throws a couple of touchdown passes and everybody will. Don't forget, the Patriots got what? They got a second round pick from the 49ers for Garoppolo, who was originally a second round pick. The guy had fewer than 100 pass attempts in the NFL before that trade and signing like that hundred and some million dollar contract. So I'm here for it. That could even be a potential uh, asset later down the road, whether it's for your football team or to further build. If you end up trading the dude, uh, when we looked at that board, is there somebody else? Did you end up taking him or no? You're still sitting there at 69. I, I, I'm sitting at 69, looking at trades. but I'm looking at a trade with the Houston Texans who clearly would like to take Levi Strauss at 73 in my Does it mind show you who they've already uh drafted i could go up to 65 before. and look at who they drafted it was nick herbig <laughs> yeah so they still haven't taken a quarterback with anything that they've had huh no they haven't that's interesting um, it says needs yeah oh, i just no, want you to i want you to look i'm doing this so that i can understand what i've netted back three round ones the next two years two uh, two round twos next year, a round two in 2025, two round threes next year, a four, two five, three fives, four fives, and two sixes. Is that 14 picks next year? Not including yeah, the ones that the Steelers... 14 picks next year and 12 picks in 2025. Not including if they have to lose somebody and get a compensatory pick. <laughs> and not including their own picks that they already have. Well, no, those... That, Aren't remember, those I in there? Well, those that's because you traded them all away. I traded them right. all away. My bad. So, but and still, I, that's I'm ridiculous. willing to bet you that the Indianapolis pick is better than our pick was going to be next year. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and, and L.A. is going to be a better first round pick than our pick was going to be. But we'll see. All right. I, I'm, I'm not going to trade, but I don't know. I'm torn. I would like to take my book in tackle. I would take, like to take Matthew Bergeron here. But I understand the value of taking Will Levi Strauss the seventh ranked PFF player at 69. 
average <laughs> draft position is 7.9 too, according to their mocks. Yes. Uh, for him to be here at like pick 69. I kind of just... feel like we have to take him, even though we don't need a quarterback. And I'm taking this chance yeah, because there it this is, is why. Yep. I knew math. I didn't know. But I was hoping Bergeron was still going to be there at 80 and I could draft him at 80. Yep. All right. So we got one more pick left in this uh, overall scheme of things. <laughs> and we're letting the, the wild machine just roll, roll, roll. It's down chugging, to, chugging, to chugging. Now, look at Ooh. who's at 71. I like this. I, there's a couple there, right there, right on the screen, man. Uh, Trenton Simpson, linebacker Clemson. Jordan or, Battle, the safety yeah. from Alabama. Or I Cindy like Brown, the safety from, from Illinois. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not against, but those two, I think I think Battle, Battle actually had a uh, visit. He visited with the Steelers, so there's a little more... Uh, what do you want to say? Credibility to that possibly being the pick. Let me see. I had the actual draft visits. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. I keep saying that. Maybe he didn't visit. I'm. I apologize. Uh, I'm wrong. Okay. I'm wrong. I hate Did to Trent admit Simpson that. Visit? Uh, Trent Simpson. They like didn't have any linebackers visit inside linebackers. None of those guys. Camel, Sanders, Henley. Uh, it was all like defensive linemen. So Siaki Ika, Keon didn't White. Didn't they go to Keanu Iowa's Benton. Pro Day? I believe so. Yes, they did. So, yeah. uh, but they were and in I Alabama. I know they went to Clemson's sure. Pro Day. But they right? were definitely. They had to go to Prims. Didn't they go yeah. to Clemson? Alabama, for sure. Too. Yeah. If I, they don't, they send scouts there. I know it depends on which brass goes. Yeah. And you get into that, you can really read to the tea leaves. But usually it's the visits. It's like, you know, Broderick Jones you already had on here. Anton Harrison. Those were official top 30 visits. Darnell Washington. Who else did we end up uh, taking here that might have been? John, did you get John Michael Schmitz? I couldn't yes, I remember. Did. Yeah, so John Michael Schmitz was a top 30 uh, Keanu Benton was a top 30. Breesey was a top 30. Tuli Tui Pulotu, also a top 30. That's that name we couldn't say. Yeah, yeah. but I I tried, man. I'm uh, Felix Anaduke Uzoma was gone, though. Uh, he was a top 30. Tyreek Stevenson, yep. Julius Brents, Joey Porter Jr., Deontay Banks, Darius Rush, and Christian Gonzalez. The two safeties, Daniel Scott and Tanner Engel, probably more in the neighborhood of like Trey Norwood. You know, okay. Uh, so here's so. a. I'm gonna. I haven't let you pick anybody. Well, I, I let you talk me into taking Will Levi Strauss, I, but I, I still would have been happy even if you didn't. But I mean, come on. Um, in all reality, here, Mitch Trubisky has got one year left. He probably shouldn't be paid uh ten million dollars this season. They can still save eight. You're not gonna let a rookie back him up. You're not gonna find a better veteran out right. there on the market to back him up. So you may as well develop the next guy. Maybe he could at least be like a Landry Jones type that could spot start two to four games. I have no problem with that. that. Yeah. All right. So here you are. Your choices are Battle or Simpson. Who do you pick? Trying to remember who all we have. We had Jack Campbell already. Right? We have Jack Campbell already, and yeah. we just signed a bunch of linebackers. Um, and we we are missing a safety at the moment. I say you got to go with uh, either Brown or Battle. Uh, probably Battle. I'm just going to go with the Alabama pedigree and knowing off the there top of my head for sure that they visited. It's not to say that Tomlin wouldn't go with the um, Big Ten player, but maybe Alabama safety. That might be. It might see it's so tough to say it was the same thing uh flash and i were talking about right and i'll pop up all your picks here on the screen and the grades here in a second um yep. but we were talking about like when you're comparing two schools and the level of play and the schedule that they have and you know even playing in front of like a hundred thousand people and big games and big moments and stuff like that there's there's certain things that um these guys are ahead of the learning curve or you can't teach that they've experienced and that's why i'd probably just nudge myself towards Face it, he's going to be a special teams player more than likely. They need special yep. teams players. Go with the Bama kid. Yeah. So, okay. We All right, here at... we go. Our our four round draft is done. We um, get an A plus. We get an A plus. There's no question about it. We get an A plus. But we've got Devin. Just to review, we get Devin Weatherspoon, Broderick Jones, Deontay Banks, Tyree Wilson, Jack Campbell, Darnell Washington, Brian Breezy. Breezy was Addison. a B plus. Yeah. <laughs> Who was a B plus? Yeah, Brian Breezy. Breezy's a B plus at 36. Yeah. Sorry, something popped on my screen. And oh, being that right. always happens. So yeah, there we go. Technical difficulties. All right, we're All right. back. Here we go. Jordan Addison, John Michael Schmitz, 
uh, who was a B minus. Keanu Benton, who was a C minus. Yeah. Will Levi Strauss <laughs> at 69 gets us an A plus. Matthew Bergeron gets an A plus. And Jordan Battle gets us an A plus. Our hey. overall draft grade is an A plus. Mock draft insanity has occurred. And we have succeeded in, in fleecing the entire NFL. We've got six first round picks over the next two years. Something ridiculous in twos, some ridiculous in threes. We got in the next two years, we have 26 draft picks. <laughs> hey, Brian, and how many players did you just take now? Are there that many oh, roster spots available? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We picked 13 players <laughs> in this draft. 13 players in this draft, 26 in the next two. That's 39 players in the, in three drafts. Okay, but Brian, you didn't get Joey Porter Jr. I know. People are going to be mad. You uh you did well, not look, you took, didn't get Paris Johnson. <laughs> I, I I didn't. And, and I'm, you I'm actually take the top upset stats. I didn't get Paris Johnson. I'm more upset that I didn't get um the the other guy that I wanted. Gonzalez? Um, no, uh, um, the other you tackle. Right. You want right? Yeah. Darnell Wright. I don't know, man. I um, I like him. I like him to be just that extra component in the run game. Um, and I'm will. I was. I was at that point. I was willing to take Darnell Wright over Broderick Jones and let Dan Moore Jr. have another season to see how he plays with a different guard. Um, but you know, Chooks had the benefit of James Daniels all season long, so. I wanted. I was like, all right, let's just let's just have that side of the line be what it needs to be. Darnell Wright and James Daniels just beating the living hell out of everyone. <laughs> James Dan, I'll tell you, James Daniels scares me, and I can't wait to see uh, Suomalo up close and personal too. I mean, it's just those guys. It's intimidating. It really is. All right, um, and just come back to this, just so we have a complete overview of what the first round ended up actually looking like. So the first round of this thing, you had Bryce, Rung, Bryce Young, Peter Skransky, Jalen Carter, Anthony Richardson, Will Anderson Jr. First, what I would consider, I mean, Peter Skransky at two, considering what the Rams gave up to give him from us, you know, basically their entire drafts for the next two years. That's a surprise. Okay. Dalton Kincaid at six, surprise. Emmanuel Forbes at eight, uh, somebody smoking crack. <laughs> Especially the Falcons. Like, the Falcons yeah. don't have other needs at eight. It at probably eight. takes... With C.J. Stroud still on the board at yeah. eight. I, I get it, The whatever the stupid test is. But, you know, look at the guy he and his performance. Okay, Paris Johnson at nine. Look, if that falls that way, then you know the conversation about potentially trading up to get him is is valid and there. Uh, Nolan Smith at eleven. I've seen Nolan Smith come all the way down to us at seventeen. I've seen Nolan Smith available at thirty-two. Yeah. So that's an iffy one. Uh, we take Devin Witherspoon, then CJ, Cancy, Darnell Wright goes. Anton Harrison going at sixteen is too high, but I I consider that an overdraft for tackle. So because the tackle run starts and I guess the commanders liked him more than they liked Broderick Jones, who we took then at 17. Um, Dewan Jones goes right after that. Then Brian Branch, then Joey Porter at 20. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Lucas Van Ness. Well, let's talk goes about that. For a, let's talk about yeah. that for a second. That's a pretty interesting block of in reality without you've manipulated the draft. The draft will get manipulated on draft yeah. night. A couple of teams will, it's already been changed because of the Packers and jets order. Uh, you have an option there, Broderick Jones. In reality, Broderick Jones. I'm not. Uh, I'm like not sold on Dewan anymore, even though he's no. Mammoth Mountain man and you know played maybe both sides, but probably more right tackle. Broderick, uh, Brian Branch. I'm not really doing cartwheels over him, but I've seen Lucas Van Ness mock to the Steelers too. I would Joey not Porter's mind Lucas there. Van Ness, not at 17, but if but, he fell into the, if he fell to 32, I'd take him. I'd be okay with Jones, but I don't think there's a reality where the Steelers take Broderick Jones over Christian Gonzalez. He drops all the way. No, to there is no such reality. Yeah. I, and there, I mean, in fact, look, there's no, there's no reality where the Seahawks 
take Joey Porter over Christian Gonzalez. That's just ridiculous. Um, and the Ravens go wide receiver when Christian Gonzalez is still on the board. Yeah, that that's, never happens. I, no. I mean, they would be the team to even take Deontay Banks at that point too. Yeah, that would be a kind of a Ravens well, move. Yeah, we were, exactly. Flash and I um, were talking about classic Ravens type moves. They'll take all the guys. Always take the guys we're interested in. Yep. All right, Van Ness. <laughs> yeah. So Bijan Robinson to the to the Jaguars. Whipler goes to the Giants. Uh and and Duki Uzoma. Did I say it right? Anadike Uzoma. Anadike Uzoma goes to the Cowboys. Deontay Banks to us. Phillips the third to the Bengals. Quentin Johnson to the Saints. Cyrus Otor Osiris Torrance to the Eagles. And Tuli Tui Poo 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 to the Chiefs. Oh, Cyrus Torrance is an interesting one too, because the Steelers, um, they had, he's the only, uh, uh kind of guard, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm sure, well, uh, Steve Avila, but isn't, uh, Avila, um, my place is center maybe. Uh, so it's, uh, Not sure, yeah. yeah, Torrance, Torrance is like maybe the, the pure guard of that group that they had come in, but they had, uh, I mentioned before Broderick, uh, Darnell, Wright, Broderick Jones, Anton Harrison, Torrance, Steve Avila, Chandler Zavala from NC state. And then John Michael Schmitz and Cody mock from North Dakota state. Those were all of the offensive line visits. Makes you wonder, Brian, they're going to pick an offensive lineman <laughs> at some point. You think they will, uh, but uh, like 17 there, like uh, Christian Gonzalez, I think is head and shoulders above that. I think I'd go Gonzalez and then Broderick Jones as far as the oh, yeah. pecking order. But if like, you pass on Jones, he's probably gone by 32 anyway. So uh, that's the risk you run. I have, it wouldn't have been have, 32, yeah. but you know what I mean? And in this case, 27 or whatever the hell you got. <laughs> if I'm being real and, and this, which, you know, that look, just saying, if I'm being real after doing this nonsense is a, a ridiculous <laughs> statement back up there right for you everybody. Know, nonsense just forget it after after saying that but let's say in fantasy land you know sunny weaver jr gets this to work out and it, it, when i took broader jones i i, sh I would have taken christian gonzalez i would have said i'd rather have my corners locked down corners on both sides of the ball and i'll take because that's clearly where the steelers value tackles anyway they don't they don't necessarily value that way uh, you know they've already built up the interior line they think that's going to help the tackles they have i would take cody mock later in the in the draft you know within those eight picks that i had or six picks that i had in the first eight in the second round so <laughs> or i could trade back up with one of the nine billion picks i have next two years yes and get get the guy i want so if, you if could, tra you could really... probably trade for the next two number one overall picks with everything you got. <laughs> really? So, I mean, I, I would have, I would have definitely taken both those guys, Witherspoon and Gonzalez, at which point there is no point in taking Joey Porter, which is why Joey Porter wasn't in that conversation. Um, you know, if you've got Gonzalez and Witherspoon all locked up, what are you going to do with Joey Porter? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm with you 100 percent of the way. This is always fun to do. Uh, I know you've been a busy dude. Uh, I'm a busy dude trying to get this all in here, but it's draft week, man. It's finally it here. Is. How many more and sleeps? How many more it's, sleeps? It's two, two more, more sleeps. Two more sleeps, and yes. then we'll be up late at night. Uh, are we going? Are we doing live? live? Did we live. say we're going live? Gonna try and go live. I got to make sure live. that you know. I got to dot the lowercase J's and cross the t's and all that stuff and make sure yes uh post post draft live steel city Each underground Thursday and friday night right late and probably night. not saturday night. no i'm not man saturday i mean they're not even doing the draft thing with the steelers because there's no picks on saturday to do right. it so uh and then they're doing the other thing at stage ae with uh cam hayward show i know live there so the, the only reason i considered going i'm not going because i don't like Going to stay, J.E. Yeah, I've been there. It's an okay concert. But it's one of the Live Nation things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a couple of them around. Uh, there's another one like that in Columbus, Ohio, too. Yeah. Uh, they're okay places. I mean. Oh, they're not bad. It's just yeah. uh, there's too it's many. It's going to be chaos like, there. too many people. I don't, I don't, uh, the, you know me. I don't let's like face people it. that much. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, equal opportunity hater. Hate everybody. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Except you. I love you, man. Well, yeah, back at you, my brother. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, it's a lot of fun. It's insanity. Insanity. Crazy. It is crazy. Um, do you have an actual pick 
Who's your guy? I in case I don't get you back on, I was thinking about maybe doing another one of these where we just give all of our picks, our mocks. I've already <sighs> set, I set, I think I set mine up as Joey Porter. Yeah, Joey Porter Jr. was my guy because then I have Anton Harrison second round. Somebody was blasting that, but I'm like, how can you not look at the value? Not everybody's going to be perfect coming out of college. I absolutely love this. Kyle Brandt, good morning football. Let me think of exactly. He called it a scratch off ticket. That is what the NFL draft is. Yeah. You don't know if you're going to win or not. Like, half no, the players. You have no idea. Yeah. So it's a guess regardless. Like, a, you know, people are going to say, well, you could have got so and so or whatever, but that's not the position they were looking at. It's not the value that was there. It's not what all the the, the different things and hindsight is 2020. 20. Yeah. You know, once after the guys made five Pro Bowls, you can always go back and go, well, I knew he would. No, you didn't. <laughs> you see that but, all the time. I love yeah. the draft boards right now. Like I saw one that only had like one or two elite players listed totally like in the entire draft. Like, come on, man. There's going to be somebody that squeaks into the fourth or fifth round. that surprises everyone. It always, Absolutely. Says, if they get the opportunity, it's, it's, um, it's the environment that they're in the opportunity that they may have. It, it sometimes, I mean, Antonio Brown never gets discovered. If Emmanuel Sanders doesn't have a foot injury. Right. He probably doesn't get on the field. Maybe special teams might help him uh, with the return game, and maybe that gets him a little bit of, well, let's see what this guy could do on the field. But he doesn't get as much PT if if Sanders doesn't get hurt, and that's just one of a billion examples. There's probably many players who could have been good or great in the NFL that never stepped on the field. Tom Brady, without Drew Bledsoe getting hurt, we don't never know. He never has this. There may not have been a Tom Brady. Storybook Cinderella career. So. Yeah. Well, you asked me who my pick is. Yes. I, I will tell you that if Porter is there, I think I, can, I the same reasons you gave in the article. I can't get past the bloodlines. If he's there, I think they take him. The thing is, I don't think he's going to be there. Yeah. Um, I think there's a good chance the Patriots will snag him at 14. Um, you know, so it's just iffy. If he's not there, I, I will tell you that I will not at all be upset if they take Lucas Van Ness, if he's oh. there. Um, it's interesting. So you're and, and, you're gone. You're not thinking that they won't do a deal with Highsmith then, or are you thinking uh, I don't somebody think else Lucas said Van, Van Ness, Ness has to, I think Van Ness can play inside. In, I think he yeah. can be a tackle. Um, one of I our commenters, think, yeah, one of our yeah. commenters mentioned that. And I, was I don't, to it's say not it. necessary that he has to be an edge. I know he's listed as an edge, but I don't think he's really necessarily just an edge. I think he's a, a piece that, They've never had where it's really a guy that can play any of the positions except probably nose. He probably can't play nose, but he can play either side on tackle or edge and and probably contribute, which gives you a lot of flexibility there. I don't think it prevents them from trying to re-sign Alex Highsmith. I want them badly to re-sign Alex Highsmith. Um, but I like Lucas Van Ness a lot. And if if all the top tackles are gone, which I think that there's a good chance they will be, um and Porter is gone and and for whatever reason you know you know it's Deontay Banks is probably the one that's still left I don't think I take him at 17. You don't want um, Banks at 17. See I'd be comfortable yeah. with Banks and Broderick Jones at 17. In I'm not upset Joey Porter. with them right I wouldn't be mad I wouldn't be like oh dang that's terrible but if I if it was up to me I would probably not right because I don't I just don't know um I just had a feeling, right? So I I would be much more likely to do that. And potentially, um, you know, if if right is the only tackle option left, I would take him at 17. But those the three guys I think are in play realistically are Joey Porter, Darnell Wright, maybe Deontay Banks, but I also think Lucas Van Ness could be in play. Um, and then I, I'm all, unless they trade 32, I'm all about Jack Campbell at 32. Yeah, I don't uh, think they'll take him at 32. I don't think that's going to happen at all. But I would be all over that crap. I hear you loud and clear on that. We've seen it's just there's so many things in so many different directions. It's hard to say. The other uh, I mentioned like all the other corners that they looked at it really looked like porter or banks they looked at gonzalez too i guess that's just if he slides kind of have to like yeah. like brentson stevenson and uh, darius rush are probably more like i would assume 
late second or into third round third. type prospects. Darius Rush is third round. But maybe. there's there's no denying, I think, that at least we talk about positions of need and what they looked at and the way they structure the roster. They were looking at wide receivers. They went through Ming, Jonathan Mingo, Charlie Jones, Jaden Reed, Bryce Ford Wheaton, Cedric Tillman. Uh, those aren't guys at the top of this. If they end up taking one, they don't seem like they need to take one, especially with Allen Robinson already uh, yep. traded for miles Boykins back. Uh, they got like six dudes now. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're comfortable there. Um, the one that could surprise is Darnell Washington, of course, as far as like, you know, just going by the visits thing, but they uh, overwhelmingly, it's like offensive line, defensive line corner. And yes. uh, that's got to be some mix of those uh, first three or four draft picks. We'll see how they all fall in. They had Clayton Toon and uh, out of Houston and Jaron Hall from BYU visit as your quarterback. So if Will Levis doesn't fall to the third round, that's probably what you're looking at as your QB three and clipboard holder for this year. <laughs> if Will Levi Strauss falls to the third round the way he did in this thing, I, I'm just going to laugh so hard uh, because it, I, like – I don't like him. I don't. I don't like the guy that much, right? I'm not. I don't want to draft him. Brian but, doesn't want to use pick sixty nine on him, anyways. I'm just like no. at this point, man. I mean, there was a. My how could thirty? How draft. could thirty one teams be wrong twice? Like it's, yes. it's. Is it the Dan Marino slide? Yeah, like, it's. I. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how Christian Gonzalez got down to twenty three. I don't so. know. <laughs> None of it makes any sense. It won't. And it, it, it won't when we get the actual draft day. There's going to be no. your surprises. Like There absolutely will be. The, that Patriots uh, offensive lineman like a year or two ago, like, where did he come from? Like uh, Queen Mary, mother of all saints <laughs> university or something like that. Yeah. It was like, who is this guy? Like, I, I still can't even say what his name is, but uh, folks, I'll do it for us. A couple more sleeps draft around the corner. Brian, thanks for joining us. Good to have you back, buddy. Absolutely. Can't wait. Um, I'm geeked up. I'm pretty excited about 98% of the guys that could fall where the Steelers are. We'll see what they end up doing. Do I think that they're going to necessarily trade? Well, I had a little bit of a tweet about that just to close out the show. Our two percenters and people who like my sarcasm at times. Sometimes I poo-poo on the ideas. And um, there was um, the exact quote that I have is someone asked, I said, Mike, referred to Mike Tomlin, uh, first name basis. I'm not sure who asked this. I wonder if it was like Bob Labriola or somebody like that that really knows him. But Mike, you've never had the first pick to start a day. How advantageous is that? And he says, man, we're excited about it. We've been talking about it. I think the thing that we're least familiar about is the amount of calls that we will be or could be getting. That's what we've spent our time talking about. How do we organize and how do we get prepared for the receiving of the amount of interest that that pick could have? That's a good and exciting possibility for us. Everybody and their brother said they're trading to pick. It's like, no, they're just somebody asked. You've never been there. What are you? How are you preparing for this? And it was coach speak and draft what if, speak. What if, what if they get a 2024 first round pick from a team like Buffalo, Kansas city, who wants to jump back to 32? I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about getting a, uh, switching in an earlier pick on day two for an earlier pick a year later. And it might not be as early because that trade with the bears. Remember the bears were what, like six and one, they were doing really well. And then they just shut the bed after that clay pool trade. Well, that's why I picked a team that was going to be good. Yeah. So no, you knew it was going to be a lower end pick. That won't be a top 50. I don't think. Yeah, so I'm not interested in 32. They got to give something else. So you're saying a first rounder and then the second rounder next year? No, I'm saying a first rounder next year. Oh, first rounder next year. So that'll first be rounder like pick, next year. Uh, and, it could be like and, pick 25 to 32. Or something. And, yeah, something something like that. A low end first round pick. What you assume is going to be a low end first round pick because what you know at the same Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, gets hurt. Uh, Josh Allen gets hurt. All of a sudden, they're drafting in the top 10. <laughs> Well, look at the Denver Broncos and what they yeah. gifted the Seahawks for Russell Wilson. I mean, there's a prime oh, yeah. example, and it depends what the board looks like. Depends what the Steelers already took. If Paris Johnson slides to 17, I'll trade 32. That's not a I will tell you if Paris Johnson slides to 13 or 17, or if um, they they cover a corner at at 17. One of those two, if they if their tackle is a good like a top tackle. And their corner is one of the top four corners at 17. I'd trade 32. Okay. 
Uh, fair enough. I mean, uh, we're on board with that. There isn't anything I'm really sticking on. It's such a weird draft now because um, I'm just thankful. They all don't this have being to... said, they won't move at all. Yeah, it's a, that's <laughs> the sealer way. Not not yeah. typical. Remember, they were going to move and they were going to grab David and Joku. And yeah, I just it's National Liars Month. It's just the way <laughs> it is. I, I don't buy most of this stuff that's out there. Brian, thanks once again, folks. I'll do it for us up against it. My name's Joe and his name's Brian. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, stay tuned. Live shows coming. We're going to keep you up even later, especially if you're on the East Coast on draft nights, Thursday and Friday, Steel City Underground, late night. Uh, that'll do it for us. Until next time, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.